Straight up, I've been avoiding this video. Why? Well, there are a number of reasons. One, the carnivore community are like rabid wolves when it comes to their defense of their nutrition lifestyle, working like a pack to disembowel anyone who dares question. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but being on the receiving end of hundreds of comments, I do sometimes feel like chum to sharks. <laughs> but let's put that aside. I know there are plenty of reasonably minded carnivorites, or is it carnists, or carno... Oh, whatever. You get the idea. There are plenty of reasonable people too. But the second reason is that there is extremely little research on the carnivore diet, and considering Physionic is built on the backbone of data-driven conclusions, it's difficult to justify any sort of science-based commentary that directly probes the health effects of a carnivore diet. However, there is one study and a shipload of anecdotes, or really many shiploads, that we can actually lean on to describe what in the world is going on with the carnivore diet. So, I'm going to be mixing in this single study along with all that I've gathered up to now across my multiple study analyses spanning over saturated fat, polyunsaturated fats, ketogenic diets, and more, as well as my master's and PhD education to try to come to some form of reasonable, semi-quantitative, semi-qualitative assessment of the carnivore diet. Additionally, this is always the case, but it is especially the case right now that I reserve the right to change my stance as more data becomes available. Okay, preamble out of the way, let's dive in. This study is not the greatest quality study, but I do think that it offers some great insight regardless. The whole study is based on self-report and blood work taken from over 2,000 participants enrolled in the study. Essentially, the researchers sent out a survey to gather information on people who proclaimed to be following a carnivore diet for at least six months. The information gathered was questions related to their life pre-diet and during diet. They also had some blood work from a smaller sample of individuals that had blood work to share. So, yes, the study could be confounded every which way, but, and this is purely subjective, I believe the results of this study merely because I encounter a lot of people on the diet and they repeatedly report these findings for themselves. Is that very scientific or unbiased? Absolutely not. You can take it or leave it. I respect it either way. Okay, so what did these researchers find out? Well, the first striking piece of data is illustrated here, indicating the percentage of people who either experienced relief, betterment from a variety of symptoms, or no change, or worse outcomes. As you can clearly see, the vast majority of individuals on a carnivore diet experienced improvements across every metric. That's that's really impressive. A small minority of people experienced no noticeable effect and a tiny minority experienced worse effects. Now, there's a clear bias in the study here because the sample was taken from carnivore forums. And I don't know about you, but most people who experience worse health on a diet aren't going to stick it out for over six months to see if it gets better as they hang out in the carnivore forums. So, as a result, those in the carnivore forums, being a biased sample, will offer largely positive reviews. Nothing wrong with that, but it does skew the results dramatically toward showing only positive effects and very little, if any, negative effects. Still, no doubt many people experience everything outlined in the data so far. To look at things a little more granularly, we can take a peek at this data which indicates all the specific conditions on the left and the level of improvement on top. So you'll notice that the majority of people not only experience improvements, but experience a complete reversal of their disease states. We're talking over 50% of people losing all of their desired body fat. 
over 60% eliminating their high blood pressure and over 40% improving their cognitive problems like a cloudy mind, inability to think clearly, and so on. Finally, over 70% completely reverse their diabetes, which was further evidenced by a huge number of people being able to completely stop taking their diabetes medication. I mean, come on. You can't act unimpressed by that. That's astounding. I can see why so many people rave about the diet. If you're seeing that level of reversal, that level of health improvement, I'd be using a megaphone to scream it into people's ears too. All right, one more layer deeper. Based on the people that did end up getting blood work done, it seems there were quite some improvements here as well. As you can see, we're comparing the two median values here. So the median column under the current for those that are on the diet currently, and the median column under the pre-diet, at least for simplicity's sake. So in measures of weight, there was a statistically significant drop when adopting a carnivore diet. Additionally, there were improvements in the diabetes markers, so like HbA1c, and inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein. So again, some great results. Okay, so it seems the carnivore diet is a Michael Jordan slam dunk, and no LeBron fans. Just kidding. Okay, here's where I like to apply some of my education in the field, and what I've analyzed through many, many peripherally related studies. If you do not want to hear any negative interpretation of the carnivore diet, I am warning you right now that this is the cutoff point. If you feel that someone who dedicates their life to reading and analyzing research six to seven days a week has multiple advanced degrees in the field and genuinely cares about getting to the truth is below your experience on the carnivore diet, please turn off the video right now. Do it. I'm not kidding. For everyone else that wants to hear a more balanced interpretation, let's keep going. I am not going to deny any of the results of this study, even if there are many flaws of the study design. I accept that many people have experienced and would experience an improvement in many, many markers of health from a carnivore diet. However, there are a number of reasons for this, and there's also one additional consideration that is not so obvious. First, if you consume a high-calorie, highly palatable diet mixing fats and carbohydrates together into a delectable package that coaxes you into eating ever more, thereby increasing the caloric burden day in and day out, and you switch to literally anything else, you will likely see some results. Switching to a low-carbohydrate diet focused on fats, or switching to a vegetarian diet, or simply focusing on cooking at home, eating whole foods only, the list really could just go on. The point is, anything else is better than the ease of access of highly processed foods. Now, that said, a huge component is how easy it is for someone to stick to that diet. Switching from a standard Western diet to a vegan diet sounds fun for about a day, and then you realize it requires a huge habit change including learning how to cook vegan, shop vegan, eat at restaurants vegan. You begin to miss the simplicity of life before going vegan. That's just one example. The beauty of a carnivore diet is that it's extremely simple. Eat mostly, if not completely, meat. Done. It's not easy to deviate because one, the rules are simple. There's one. Eat meat. If you do anything other than that, for the most part, you are not following the rule. And number two, you are eating a food that is the highest yield of the most satiating nutrient, protein. Imagine going from eating 50 grams of protein a day to 300 grams of protein a day. Your hunger will just evaporate faster than water in the Sahara. These aren't criticisms. They're just a positive reality of the carnivore diet that offers significant advantages. However, the tremendous results that people achieve, in my estimation, is not because of some magic found in meat, but rather simply eliminating everything else leads to reprieve from things that cause problems in terms of hunger, complexity, allergies, trigger foods, and the list goes on. 
However, if you were to switch to a chicken and avocado diet, you'd likely see the exact same results because it would follow the same rules of simplicity and necessitates a substantial increase in protein. So, yes, the carnivore diet works, zero doubt about it, even with so few studies. However, while there are many positives, it also hides some negatives. Before I continue, I must remind you that if you decided to not turn off the video earlier, I'm offering you a second opportunity before I get into the dreaded topic of cholesterol. If you felt a pinch of anger in your gut because you just know cholesterol isn't a health problem, then adieu, mesdames et messieurs. This next section is not for you. If I pull the data back up, we can see that even with these self-reported results, there is an elevation of LDL or low-density lipoproteins, which carry cholesterol across our body. I have analyzed many studies on the topic, and yes, LDL is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. It is not the only factor, but it is one factor. These are not small increases either. They are pretty sizable, and over time, could lead to serious cardiovascular issues. One rebuttal is looking at the CAC score, or the coronary artery calcium score, which did not change between the pre-diet and the carnivore diet. That is zero surprise, as these individuals were on a carnivore diet for an average of a little over a year, which is far too soon to see any changes. This is where we desperately need studies, long-term studies, at least 10 years, but likely longer, to be able to begin teasing out the carnivore diet risk to cardiovascular health. Surely people will talk about how lipoproteins are large and buoyant, or that they need to be oxidized, or that inflammation is lower so it isn't an issue, or that their insulin resistance is reduced, or that LDL is a useless marker. If you feel that way, fine. I did warn you to click off the video, but I can't state this plainly enough. You are wrong. Having this level of elevated LDL is a worry long term, even if the immediate concerns are clearly quite well addressed. So what's the verdict on the carnivore diet? This might surprise some considering it even surprises me, but I also can't deny the profound changes that people experience on this diet. I do think that a carnivore diet can drastically improve many indices of health and can likely keep certain metrics in the normal healthy ranges for years. So for that, I think it's a positive nutrition move. I also think that if someone has tried everything and their health is failing drastically using something that cuts out all the BS and simplifies things to just one rule, eat meat, can have dramatic life-changing effects. I would encourage you to introduce and test out other food groups in a systematic way to find out what might also be well tolerated in time. But as a starting point, I understand the appeal and power of limiting to just one food. However, the carnivore diet isn't perfect. I haven't mentioned all the long-term potential issues with it, and many of them are insidious, not nearly as poignant as dramatic weight loss or reduced blood sugar and things of that nature. But it does have some health implications, even if they might occur many years down the line. I would be really wary of that. All in all, this is more true now than really ever. We need hundreds of studies on the carnivore diet for us to be able to examine it more thoroughly and determine if some of my educated predictions turn out to be right or wrong. I look forward to the future years. Hopefully we can get some of these studies so that I can cover them here on Physionic. I appreciate you hearing me out. And now that I haven't outright demolished the carnivore diet as hell on earth, I expect to be chum for the vegan sharks, or should I say a leaf for the vegan giraffes. Bye.